this video is just going to be an extremely brief introduction to representation theory, and in particular, uh, the theory of representing groups as matrices, which will come in handy quite a bit later on. And so, like I said, this is going to be very brief. So uh, I'm essentially just going to sort of, uh, you know, postulate or just say that you can represent uh, our group elements with these matrices and you will end up under matrix multiplication just getting the uh, same sorts of combinations that you can get from our group and I'll be using our C3V uh, group example here. Uh, so the first thing uh, I just wanted to point out so I'm using this book here as my uh, guide to this video series. And in this book, uh, I found an error in it. So uh, so the author puts this uh, matrix here and this matrix here, uh, where I found that this actually works out if you switch them around. And so these matrices look very similar, but this one has the positive in the, uh, in the upper right corner. Uh, right there and so this then uh, I switch it to right here where this one has the positive in this lower left corner here and so that's getting switched to there and so that is how those are getting switched around and so if you're interested in how I discovered the error uh, you can check the lecture notes and I left uh, kind of a, a a long thing at the bottom of it if you wanted to look into that but uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video uh, so anyway we have these matrices here uh, and these are a group in fact they're an isomorphic group to our C3V group uh, given a certain vector space which I'll talk about more in a future video so this is given uh, you know a set of bases uh, then these matrices are a representation of our group the C3V group and the binary operation is matrix multiplication which uh, is done using this right here. So you essentially just take the top ones here and multiply it by these side ones here to get the upper left corner. And you take the top ones here, multiply it by the other side to get the uh, top right corner. And then you do the bottom with the left to get the bottom left. And then the bottom with the right to get the bottom right here. Uh, so that is matrix multiplication. And that is our binary operation that makes the, these particular matrices up here uh, isomorphic and therefore a representation of our C3V group. And so this is how they pair up. Uh, so this M1 here is our identity. So the M2, so I, these are the ones that I have switched around uh, from what's in the book uh, are our C3 and C3 bar. Uh, then we have these ones here for our sigmas. And so the C3V uh, uh, combines in this way. And so you could essentially just take each of these M sub numbers and replace everything in here with those and it would actually work out that way using matrix multiplication and so that's why it's a representation because uh, using the the binary operation uh, with say you know like the m4 and the m5 you'll get the same thing as if you took uh, if you did the binary operation of sigma 1 with sigma 2 and in fact down here I have an example uh, and so, for instance, this is doing the matrix multiplication of M3 with M6, which gives us M5. And so uh, I go through the, uh, the matrix multiplication steps here. Uh, but since M3 is mapped onto our C3 bar, so that's what we have right here. Uh, then the sigma 3 is mapped onto our M6, that's right here. And then the sigma 2 is mapped onto our M5, and so that is right there. And so we can see how doing the binary operation of matrix multiplication with this group of matrices is, the, is isomorphic to doing the, uh, the symmetry operations with our C3V symmetry group. Uh, and so in general, we can find uh, 
it's up to the order of our group. So in the C3V case, it would be six, uh, but this is the order of our group matrices. And so we can find that many matrices. Uh, this right here should actually just be an, another M. Uh, so that should be another M there, not an R. So M sub uh, the order of G. Uh, and we can associate them with that number of elements uh, from our group, which is this right here, uh, in a way where if we take one element of our group, do the binary operation with another element, we get a third element of our group. Uh, and it will be the same with our matrix representations for all pairs of elements in all the matrices. Uh, then all the matrices are said to be a representation of G. And so, uh, we want a representation to be faithful, then it needs to be an isomorphism because we can make uh, homomorphic representations, uh, but those will have fewer elements than our group. If we want a faithful representation, then it has to be an isomorphism, which means one to one, which means there would be just as many matrices as there are uh, as there are elements in our group. Uh, and so how to actually form the representations and the so-called irreducible representations will be a topic for a later video. Uh, and sometimes you'll see the matrix representations of a group written like this, uh, where we have this D here, and then we are kind of taking our group elements as like the argument for this D function here, where this function is mapping our our uh, group elements onto the matrices. And so the letter D is used uh, because of the German word, and uh, I'll probably mispronounce this, but Darstellung, uh, which translates to representation uh, from German. And so you'll see this uh, quite often where the thing here in parentheses is sort of like what it's a function of. So it's mapping our uh, our group elements onto these matrices here. Uh, but anyway, like I said, the, this is a very brief introduction to representation theory, and I'll talk about it uh, quite a bit more in future videos. Uh, but you know, the main takeaway here is just that we can represent uh, our group elements as matrices, where these matrices combine under matrix multiplication uh, in such a way that they form a group that is isomorphic to our, uh, our symmetry group. Uh, but anyway, I will see you in the next video.